Welcome. In this tutorial, we'll walk through the process of creating a parameterized retaining wall in Revit using a profile. This method enables flexibility and precision in our designs. Let's get started. To begin, we need to create a profile that will define the shape of our retaining wall. To do so, we'll open a new family suitable for our profile. In this case, we'll use a simple metric profile. Um, the generic metric profile comes with default reference planes. But we'll insert two additional reference planes, one for the thickness of the base and another for the height. Now that we have our reference planes, we'll design a simple profile using the line tool. We'll ensure the top of the retaining wall is below the bottom reference level. Once the profile is complete, we'll dimension it and set the required parameters. All required parts of the profile will be labelled.
top thickness adjusts the thickness of the uppermost horizontal part of the retaining wall. Top extension determines the horizontal extension of the top part of the profile. Slope defines the angle of inclination of the retaining wall on the filled side. Toe thickness specifies the thickness of the pad beneath the base of the wall. Toe extension adjusts the length of the horizontal part extending outward from the base. Base length sets the length of the base on the side opposite the filled area. Stem thickness controls the thickness of the vertical portion stem of the wall. Stem height measures the vertical height of the retaining wall starting from the top level of the base. Base length fill extends the base length of the retaining wall beneath the filled area. Next, we'll test the parameters to ensure they are functioning correctly. For example, we'll adjust dimensions like thickness, extension and height, confirming they respond appropriately. Once the profile is ready, we'll use a metric structural foundation template to model the retaining wall. Before proceeding, we'll insert the profile we created earlier and link it to the sweep tool. After the profile is applied, we'll set up additional parameters such as length to control the sweep path, which determines the overall length of the retaining wall. We'll set up and link the corresponding parameters. Once all parameters are defined, we'll test them to ensure they offer the necessary flexibility for adjusting the retaining wall's design to meet specific requirements.
Setting up the fly material parameter and linking it ensures that the material can be modified easily and consistently throughout the project. We will set up new parameters in the foundation family to ensure greater flexibility and control over the retaining wall design. We will link angle to angle. Base depth is linked to base depth. Base length fill is linked to length fill. Base length is linked to base length. Slope fill is linked to slope. Stem height is linked to stem height. Stem thickness is linked to stem thickness. Thickness pad is linked to toe thickness. Toe extension is linked to toe extension. Top extension is linked to top extension. Top thickness is linked to top thickness. This process ensures that the sweep in the foundation family responds dynamically to the adjustments made in the profile parameters. Finally, we'll rearrange and organise all parameters for clarity and usability. We assign the default length label to the length dimension to control the sweep length. Consequently, we eliminate the previously created retaining wall length parameter as it becomes redundant with this setup. Next, we'll test the parameters to ensure they are functioning correctly. For example, we'll adjust dimensions like thickness, extension and height, confirming they respond appropriately. Our family is now ready to be used in a project. It is important to test it in the project environment as well. Therefore, we will insert the family into a project and test it by changing the parameter values. We'll make necessary adjustments, such as ensuring that changes occur in one direction from the insertion point, allowing the retaining wall to extend in the desired direction. The result is a fully functional parametric retaining wall. This approach allows you to adapt the retaining wall to various design scenarios, making your workflow efficient and versatile.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more tutorials. See you next time.